Hey everyone, welcome to the Dev Diary for Patch 2.2. I'm Jane Chen, and I want to give you a peek into the stuff coming to Wild Rift over the next couple of months. Today, we're going to be covering brand new champions, some amazing skins, and an update on choosing your position in game, and even newer ways to play Wild Rift. So stick around. This is our biggest patch yet, so let's get right into it. We want to officially welcome all the players in the Americas into the open beta. We know you've been patiently waiting, and we're thrilled to finally launch Wild Rift in your region. To get you caught up to speed, we're introducing a special limited time event called Wild Welcome. During this time, you'll earn champions and other content faster to help you get started. Of course, that's in addition to the rewards you'll receive for your time and investment in League of Legends by logging in using your Riot Games account. Very soon, we'll be adding in-game support for Arabic. It's taken us some time to get it ready because we've adjusted the game's UI layout completely so it should feel natural to navigate around. Let us know what you think and where we can improve. One of the things we've heard a lot from you is that Wild Rift has a lot of humanoid champs, not as many monstrous types. So let's take a peek into the cave and find out who's coming next. What happens when two of League's deadliest champions clash in the most dangerous of games? We'll find out in our next major event, Masters of the Hunt, launching next month. The event will throw you into the ancient rivalry between Kha'Zix and Rengar to determine who is Predator and who is Prey. We're also introducing a new gameplay system specifically for this event. We'll have more details coming soon, including rewards, so stay tuned for more. As we said earlier this year, we're looking to flesh out Wild Rift's item pool. Patch 2.2 brings a few new items and tweaks, including refreshing the item icons so they more closely match the ones on League PC. Let's dive in. We're adding Frozen Heart, Force of Nature, and Sunfire Aegis to help flesh out the item pool for tank players. Sapphire Crystal now has a Mana Charge passive on it, so you can stack earlier and evolve your Tier of the Goddess items sooner. Sheen no longer builds out a Sapphire Crystal, making it a more accessible choice to non-mana users. Outside of items, the summoner spell Ghost wasn't seeing a lot of use, so we're updating it as the PC has. It should now be stronger and more fun to use. Its top speed is reduced, but the buff lasts longer now, and on takedown, your speed boost will be reapplied, so now everyone can get excited, just like Jinx. Finally, we're changing the way champions play with higher attack speed. Right now, stacking a bunch of attack speed basically makes you feel like you have no wind-up on your attacks, giving you an easy way to flawlessly kite or chase as a high-powered marksman. We're adjusting this so it's not so forgiving. We'll be keeping an eye on win rates closely to make sure it doesn't feel too bad for dual laners. Over the past few months, we've been gathering your feedback about quality of life features you want to see in the game. We've heard you, and we're adding some features to make your experience better. We're adding new pings to give you a way to say, enemy missing, and enemy has vision here. For advanced customization, you can now tune the dead zones on your ability buttons. The bigger the dead zone, the harder it is to accidentally aim when tapping abilities. We've added more clarity around when neutral objectives spawn on the minimap. And you can now optionally hide player names in game, or choose to display champion names instead. Many of you have asked for a way to have more control over the position you play in-game. We're going to be running a short test for a feature we're calling 
position preference. Choose which playstyle you're most interested in, and the matchmaker will try to assign you one of your preferred positions in the lobby. If you don't want to pick manually, we'll look back at your recent history and base it off that instead. We're only running this for a few days to collect data on how well it's working, so you'll find a separate queue in the rank tab. For anyone who wants to help us test, none of your matches, ratings, or event progress will carry over from this queue, so give it a try. We'll keep iterating on the system, and if it's going well, we'll be adding it to ranked at a later date. One quick note, this test won't be available in the Americas yet, as the game will still be too new, but we'll be sure to keep you all updated if that changes. This patch introduces the premier first to Wild Rift skin line called Stargazer. The Stargazers are godlike archivists who can see and influence fate by studying the stars. Joining the roster are Camille, Twisted Fate, and Soraka. And we'll be running a small in-game event to celebrate the launch. And of course, we won't leave you without another quick look at some other skins coming soon. Later in the patch, we're introducing the Wild Pass, a way to get more stuff just for playing. Here's how it works. The Wild Pass works just like you'd expect, leveling up as you play, rewarding you with skins, currencies, icons, emotes, bubbles, and other goodies along the way. You can upgrade your Wild Pass at any point to claim all the content you've earned so far. And if you don't decide to upgrade, all players can still earn blue motes and portal coins from the pass totally free of charge. There's also the Wild Pass Elite, which comes with some extra missions and XP to help speed up your progress. Reaching level 50 on the Wild Pass grants an exclusive skin, Explorer Jax, to show the world how far you've come. But things don't stop there. There are some extra bonus rewards to help you add more content to your collection. Let us know what you think when it rolls out at the start of Wild Rift's second ranked season in April. Finally, Starting this patch, we'll temporarily bring a player favorite game mode from League of Legends. That's right, all random, all mid, or ARAM is on its way. So starting soon, we'll be releasing a temporary test for ARAM on all servers. For those of you unfamiliar with ARAM, it's a shorter, faster paced game mode set on the Howling Abyss, a bridge atop a bottomless crevasse where warriors once fought to defend the rest of the Freljord from an ancient enemy. Compared to Wild Rift's three lanes, in ARAM, there's only one. And instead of picking your champion, you're assigned a random one from your pool. Of course, just like in PC, if you have available rerolls, you can try again to get a champion you like better. There's also a new two-part summoner spell called Mark Dash. Use Mark to throw a snowball at your enemies and reactivate it to dash to them, similar to Lee Sin's first ability. Melee fighters and tanks can use this to instantly get the party started. Now, this is just the first step. Not everything is going to be balanced or polished, so we'll need a lot of feedback to make this a better experience. Also, in this first iteration, we're releasing without support for some features like ARAM-specific loadouts so that we can get your feedback on the gameplay sooner. We've got a ton more information on ARAM and our approach to new modes in the blog post we just released. And that's it for this dev diary. Let us know what else you want to see. Enjoy Patch 2.2.